my theme is we are all in this together. We really are. While we can't see the end of the path, Embrace the beauty along the way and the unforeseen challenges too. Walk with me on my journey. I like to paint, which I'll come back to, but I like paths so that you can walk down and not really see the end, but hopefully enjoy yourself. This was me in 2003. That's my father and mother. That's what I looked like. I didn't sound like this. Um, I had a misdiagnosis and a second opinion and the wrong surgery. So this is a long list. I won't go over all of them, but I had a lump in my throat and I was sent to one team and then another and many surgeries. Finally going to Boston for radiation and we, we talked about eye patches today in the neuro-ophthalmology session. You see, I had one. Um, I was told in no uncertain terms by Dr. Leibsch in Boston that I had to go see Dr. Sen before they could do anything for me. Um, we actually started treatment and surgery, and I went up for the proton beam, but Dr. Leibsch sent us back home. He was crying. He said the tumor was out of control in between surgery and now, and we had to reschedule the wedding. Um, so in that long list, it had 18 surgeries. They weren't all for tumor. Some were spinal fluid leaks. Some were to try and correct and reconstruct. But in 2009, I had radiation in 2007 in Boston. I had a new one, probably from the original surgery that screwed me up on my cervical spine. And that's when I met Dr. Mana, who did not know anyone at the new Cordoma Foundation and turn out, turns out now to be the other Josh, as he tells me. Um, and that's Dr. Bilski, who was the surgeon. And they had something going on, which he talked about today, the high dose, not the flash yet, but the SBRT stereostatic. And after consulting with various doctors, I decided to be the fifth Cordoma patient to have this single high dose and no surgery. The surgery would have left me probably unable to speak or eat, we don't know. So I had that in 2009, and I was stable until 2019, when, as he described before with perfusion, they saw a little blood supply. It hadn't grown, but it was waking up. And he's not here anymore, Dr. Mata. I can now say I wasn't going to. They were falling off their chairs because they thought this thing was going to work forever. And I was one of the first patients, there have been a few more, who started to fail. So that changed things. They had just published on 100 patients. Um, I think he told me, five to 10% have failed, but that's still a pretty low number. And in 2019, we re-radiated, which he also talked about. And it's three, four years since then, and I'm doing fine. I have a few little issues, but nothing terrible. So I'm an example of some of the things they talked about earlier today. I'm hitting the wrong button, okay. So in 2007, after the radiation, I had to stop working. That's a whole other long story. But I thought, now what do I do? And I asked Dr. Sen, Dr. Garner, Dr. Leach, anyone I could, what can I do with my free time? And they all independently said, get the patients to the experts up front, which they're still saying. They were saying that today. And that is when the Facebook group and more community involvement happened. Um, I was inspired to take action and get people, the mantra is, multiple opinions from expert multidisciplinary teams, which again, we heard today. And social media has really changed everything. The definition of rare disease in America is 200,000. Now you're telling me, Josh, there are 7,000 
rare diseases, but how many have only 300? So no one was, in, we still have doctors saying it's benign, you know, regular radiation is fine. I don't know why when we have a full website they can Google that we have so much misinformation, but social media has made it accessible at least. You used to have to go to a medical librarian when they gonna let me in and how was I gonna find anything? This is from the first conference. Some of the people in here, Josh showed when there's Josh in there. My hair was still short from surgery and radiation. Not everyone in this picture is still with us. Um, Margie Carberry, do you remember her, Josh? Was the first Cornova patient I ever met. She's behind the woman in red with the purple. She sounded like me. Actually, Dr. Sen, you operated on her. You remember Margie. Um, hardly anyone still sounds like me, but back then, a lot of people were getting the kind of surgery through the palate that I had. Um, and there's the people that were in the picture that started it with Josh, Mike in the back, Michael Torrey, and Bill Dorlin. <sighs> um, there's Dr. Leibsch and Dr. Sen in 2009. Josh, I don't know, you look young, so I'm not sure when that picture is from. And in the early days, I actually flew down to Durham. I've ne never been back, I never went before, but um, I was trained, we called it then, Peer Connect, and became the first peer guide, which I was already kind of doing, but now it was official. And we had resources, that was the first. And you just showed Dr. Kelly in your picture. I got to go to that lab that Josh was talking about and look in the dish. I imagined it's not a line. It's not a line, it's a dish. And I thought, how lucky am I to be seeing Cordoma cells? I mean, also how weird <laughs> that I'm looking at that, but it meant there was something happening. And the other part of my life that's been affected by all this, and it's 20 years almost in February, is all the friends that I've made. Um, we had to cut this for time. I had a lot more photos of people. This is the Fitzgeralds who we saw in London, and they have another nonprofit with research um, called Cordoma UK. And um, it was Susan on the left who had Cordoma. And supporting one another, still smiling. Here we have uh, me with Lindsay, who was supposed to be here today, and Nadine, um, some other patients on the right. Felicia Powell fought very hard on the far right, and then Johnny in the middle. And Emily was here. I don't know if she's still here. She was here this morning. Okay. Then here's some more important people. Uh, Hots in the lower middle helped organized Europe gave good donations, and we went and visited him in the Netherlands and had a wonderful time. Here, Danny is on the top, he's in the room. He was a peer guide partner with me. And on the lower left, some other friends, Carol Crow fought very hard on the left. And on the right, um, some of you might remember Norma, the blue shirt. Adrian was here earlier, and in the middle is Judy Novick Silverman, whose husband David is a patient. Here's Michael, no, Chris Jones, who helps moderate the Facebook group, and was the head of the community advisory board. And there's Adrian, there, California. She was here earlier. And these are just two quick um, stories. Jessica McGeever also was a patient of Dr. Sen. And Dr. Sen, do you remember the Nova video of your surgery of her? You gave us a VCR video to watch. And you were going to remove my cheekbones, my sinuses. It, it was kind of like Frankenstein. But you had done that to her. And we watched, actually, Lindsay Rubin and I watched it. Um, and Jessica's still going, still fighting, uh, lives in Pittsburgh, meets almost any patient that goes to Dr. Gardner. And Aaron walked in, I forget which conference, and his family from Ireland said, 
to me. Um, he only has three months to live, so we thought we would come. And we got him, and Josh got him meeting doctors and talking, and they never went home. He had surgery, and he's doing very well, and it was inspiring, just inspiring. Um, some more Peer Connect people, um, again, not all of them with us. And here are two that went into the medical field. Jake Reiner's father had Cornoma. He's now in immunology school. I don't know if that's medical school. But Ryan Kaiser on the right is an actual attending doctor now with a new child. So how, how did I persevere through the 20 years of what Dr. Leaf said is the sword of Damocles hanging over me. Um, what you resist persists, and you may not want to touch your neighbor, but if you both have your hands up and push, nothing moves. If one relaxes, it moves. Or I picture a salmon fighting upstream where if it could go with the water, it would be so much easier. It's just a thought that helps me. I can't always explain why. But instead of fighting or resisting, I just try and relax. And I think my outcome has been, been better with this policy. Another, um, the silver lining, and I was just talking about this with someone. If I look back at the 20 years, I'm glad that I stopped working. And at the time, I wasn't. And it's only in hindsight that I could spend all that time helping other people, doing what I want to do, even if it's a nap, instead of the politics and the stress and the, I traveled a lot, I had a big job. So I think I may not have been here if I was still working. I certainly couldn't go to the amount of doctors I go to if I was still working. Um, so thoughts are things. And this was brought up by Susan earlier. Thoughts can become things. And I have proof of that, which I had to cut. Um, I, I know that it's true. So we attract positive or negative energy. We use visualization. And I know in, from Facebook, other people do too. In the MRI, I'm picturing like walk step by step, my walk in Central Park. Or in the radiation machine, Pac-Man eating the tumor. And I believe that the thoughts are things when you made the foundation and I got a phone call from Bill Dorlin, I think we're going to have a foundation. I mean, that was a thought that became a thing, right? He made it, he made it happen. Kicking the can down the road, this is something that Ed Les spoke about when he closed a previous conference. I've kicked the can down the road for 20 years without systemic therapy yet. So hopefully, I'll make it long enough for all of these things we're talking about today. But you've got to look at just what you have now, have the team of doctors, and then show up. Show up for surgery, show up for the MRI, show up for radiation, and then hope the foundation, with your support, finds the next thing. This is another good for life. If you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is stop digging and I drop the shovel. I'm not going to say any more about that. There's so many things you can think about. And then this is another one. I don't like that it's Henry Ford. I found out he's a famous anti-Semitic person. But whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. If you think you can't, you can't, whatever it is. If you think you can't go in an MRI machine with your head because it's too tight, well, sorry. You're going to have to. Just going to. And there are a lot of times I have heard in life, well, I can't drive in Manhattan. or I can't. We just have to rise to the occasion. And it shocks me how much people can do when they, when they have to. Um, I involved myself in a lot of the programs at Memorial, which include a writing group and art classes. I got to have a show, and I raised $3,000 by selling my art. Um, this is a shot of my champion page. I just reached my goal of 60000 with Josh's surgery. I gave in honor of him. 
this is important. There are no donations on there that are that large. There are a couple that are $500, but most of them are $25. And anyone who gives that or more, I give a painting. But it's been birthdays. It's on my email at the bottom. Everyone gets my link. It's been our wedding. I said, don't, please, no presents give to the foundation. And this is 10 years it took. But you can do it too. And it really wasn't that hard. Um, the other thing that gets artwork is CFDs, Cordoba Finding Doctors. Anyone who posts a picture with one gets a card, and so does the doctor. So I, I have gotten some handwritten thank yous um, from doctors, because you know you can frame it and stuff. And this just shows last July 4th, smiling face, me and Rob. Um, watching the fireworks. It's a fun, fun thing. And that's basically it. I want to thank the Cordoba Foundation, including the Medical, Scientific, and Community Advisory Boards. Special and eternal thanks to Josh Summer, who, I mean, watching you, this is not like an accident. Somehow, I'm sorry to say you were meant to be in this position and to help so many people. Thanks to Heather Lee, she's not here, but she and her husband have done so much to make the foundation what it is today and also set up all the conferences early on. And thanks to Shannon and Andrea for their work with survivors and co-survivors. And this remains our only hope to find a cure. And we really are all in this together.